Hello students, today we will be dealing with an important chapter in consumer sciences, markets, its types and functions and business cycles. Let's begin with a general introduction to what market is. Usually market means a place where buyer and seller meets together in order to carry on transactions of goods and services. But in economics it may be a place, perhaps may not be. In economics, market can exist even without direct contact of buyer and seller. This fact can be explained with the help of the following statement. Markets are the context between physical and conceptual where exchange takes place. Marketing includes all activities from the producer to the final consumer including processing and distribution systems. The term producer includes farmers and the manufacturer's production inputs when they produce the commodity being marketed. The term consumer is used for anyone who is the final consumer of a product or the final user of a production input. The retailer is the final link in the chain from producer to consumer. The wholesaler delivers the product to the retailer. The objectives of marketing vary. For the individual producer or consumer, the objectives may be to maximize benefits from the resource available and to expand marketing operations in order to increase wealth. From a societal viewpoint, the objectives may be to encourage efficient allocation of resources, to create wealth and promote economic growth in order to improve the general welfare of a particular society. Important considerations may also be to improve distribution of income between sectors of the economy and to maintain some stability of supply and demand for marketed goods. A market is defined as the sum total of all the buyers and sellers in the area or region under consideration. The area may be the earth, a country, a city or a state. The value, cost and price of items traded as per forces of supply at demand in a market. The market may be a physical entity or may be virtual. It may be local or global, perfect or imperfect. A market can be called the available market, that of all the people in the area. Within the available market, there is the market minimum or the market size, which will buy goods without any marketing effort. This is the lowest sale that a company could get without any action on its part. Market refers to an arrangement whereby buyers and sellers come in contact with each other directly or indirectly to buy or sell goods. Thus, the above statement indicates that face-to-face -face contact of buyer and seller is not always required. For example, in a stock or share market, the buyer and seller can carry on their transactions through internet. So internet here forms an arrangement and such arrangement also is included in the market. Let's now look on to the classifications or types of market. Generally, a market can be divided on the basis of place, time and competition. On the basis of place, the market is classified into 1. Local market or regional market 2. National market or countrywide market 3. International market or global market On the basis of time, the market is classified into 1. Very short period market 2. Short period market 3. Long period market and 4 very long period market. On the basis of competition, the market is classified into perfectly competitive market structure and imperfectly competitive market structure. Both these market structures widely differ from each other in respect of their features, price, etc. Under imperfect competition, there are different forms of markets, 
like monopoly, duopoly, oligopoly and monopolistic competition. A monopoly has only one or a single seller. Duopoly has two sellers. Oligopoly has little or fewer number of sellers. Monopolistic competition has many or several number of sellers. The two parties involved in a transaction are termed as seller and buyer. The seller sells good and services to the buyer in exchange of money. There has to be more than one buyer and seller for the market to be competitive. Based on the above mentioned characteristics, markets can be classified into perfect competition. Perfect competition is a market system characterized by many different buyers and sellers. In the classic theoretical definition of perfect competition, there are an infinite number of buyers and sellers. With so many market players, it is impossible for any one participant to alter the prevailing price in the market. If they attempt to do so, buyers and sellers have infinite alternatives to pursue. To define what monopoly is, a monopoly is the exact opposite form of market system as perfect competition. In a pure monopoly, there is only one producer of a particular good or service and generally no reasonable substitute. In such a market system, the monopolist is able to charge whatever price they wish to do in the absence of competition, but their overall revenue will be limited by the ability or willingness of customers to pay the price. Oligopoly An oligopoly is similar in many ways to a monopoly. The primary difference is that rather than having only one producer of goods and services, there are a handful of producers or at least a handful of producers that make up a dominant majority of the production in the market system. While oligopolis do not have the same pricing power as monopolists, it is possible without diligent government regulation that oligopolists will collude with one another to set prices in the same way a monopolist would. Monopolistic competition. Monopolistic competition is a type of market system combining elements of a monopoly and perfect competition. Like a perfectly competitive market system, there are numerous competitors in the market. The difference is that each competitor is sufficiently differentiated from the others that some can change greater prices than a perfectly competitive firm. An example of monopolistic competition is the market for music. While there are many artists, each artist is different and is not perfectly substitutable with another artist. Let's look on to the other classifications or types of markets. First, physical markets. Physical markets is a setup where buyers physically meet the sellers and they purchase decide merchants from them in exchange of money. Shopping malls, department stores, retail stores are examples of physical markets. Second, non-physical markets or virtual markets. In such markets, buyers purchase goods and services through internet. In such a market, the buyers and sellers do not meet or interact physically. Instead, the transaction is done through internet. Auction market. In an auction market, the seller sells his good to one who is the highest bidder. Fourth, market for intermediate goods. Such markets sells raw materials or goods required for the final production of other goods. Fifth, black market. A black market is a setup where illegal goods like drugs and weapons are sold. Sixth, knowledge market. Knowledge market is a setup which deals in the exchange of information and knowledge based products. Seventh, financial market. Financial market is a market dealing with exchange of liquid assets, usually money. Financial market is again divided into different markets. 
First, stock market. A form of market where sellers and buyers exchange shares is called a stock market. Second, bond market. Bond market is a market where buyers and sellers are engaged in the exchange of debt securities, usually in the form of bonds. A bond is a contract signed by both parties where one party promises to return money with interest at fixed intervals. Third, foreign exchange market. In such type of market, parties are involved in trading of currency. In a foreign exchange market, also called currency market, one party exchanges one country's currency with equivalent quantity of another currency. Fourth, predictive markets. Predictive market is a setup where exchange of good or service takes place for the future. The buyer benefits when the market goes up and is at a loss when the market crashes. Now, the factors determining the nature of competition. In market economies, there are a variety of different market structures that exist depending on the industry and the companies within that industry. It is important for business to understand what type of market system they are operating in when making pricing or production decisions or when determining whether to enter or leave a particular industry. The structure of a market depicts the existence of firms in a particular market and to what extent the firms constituting a specified market are functionally interrelated to each other. The term market structure refers to the degree of competition prevailing in that particular market. The power of an individual firm to control the market price by changing its own output determines the degree of competition and this power varies inversely with the degree of competition. There are four characteristics used to classify a market structure. First, the number and size distribution of sellers. Second, the number and size distribution of its buyers. Third, product differentiation. And fourth, the conditions of entry and exit. First, let's discuss about the number and size distribution of sellers. The firm's ability to affect the price and the quantity of a product supplied to a market is related to the number of firms offering the same product. If there are a large number of sellers, the influence of one firm is likely to be less. Second, the number and size distribution of its buyers. Markets can also be characterized by the number and size distribution of buyers, where there are many small buyers of a product and all are likely to pay about the same price. If there are a large number of buyers, they will be unable to demand lower prices from the sellers. One reason why large firms are able to negotiate lower prices is because of large volume purchases. Third, product differentiation. If the products competing in the market are not identical or homogeneous, they are said to be differentiated and hence product differentiation exists in the market. Product differentiation is a basis for a lot of advertising that is seen in the media where the focus is to create a strong brand preference for the product being advertised. Four, Conditions of entry and exit. Entry or exit of firm to an industry refers to the difficulty or ease with which a new firm can enter or exit a market. In short run, where the capital of firm is fixed, entry and exit does not make much difference. Ease of entry and exit is however a crucial determinant of the nature of a market in the long run. When it is difficult for firms to enter the market, existing firms will have much greater freedom in pricing and output decisions than if they had to worry about new entrants. Now, let us move on to the functions of marketing. Marketing is defined as the process 
of determining the needs and wants of consumers and being able to deliver products that satisfy those needs and wants. Marketing includes all of the activities necessary to move a product from the producer to the consumer. Thinking of marketing as a bridge will be an easy way to understand this. In order for the marketing bridge to work correctly, providing consumers with opportunities to purchase the products and services they need, the marketing process must accomplish nine important functions. The functions are, first, buying. People have the opportunity to buy products that they want. Second, selling. Producers function within a free market to sell products to consumers. Third, financing. Banks and other financial institutions provide money for the production and marketing of products. Fourth, storage. Products must be stored and protected until they are needed. This function is especially important for perishable products such as fruits and vegetables. Fifth, transportation. Products must be physically relocated to the locations where consumers can buy them. This is a very important function. Transportation includes railroad, ship, airplane, truck, and telecommunications for non-tangible products such as market information. Sixth, processing. Processing involves turning a raw product like wheat into something the consumer can use, for example, bread. Seventh, risk taking. Insurance companies provide coverage to protect producers and marketers from loss due to fire, theft, or any other natural disasters. 8. Market information. Information from around the world about market conditions, weather, price movements and political changes can affect the marketing process. Market information is provided by all forms of telecommunication such as television, the internet and phone. Ninth, Grading and standardizing. Many products are graded in order to conform to previously determined standards of quality. For example, when you purchase number one rice, you know you are buying the best quality of rice in the market. Now, utilities of marketing. The marketing process must also add utility to the products consumer want. Utility is the use or satisfaction a person gets from a particular product. If you purchase a knife or a fruit, you anticipate that you will receive a certain amount of utility from it. You will be able to use the knife to cut fruits, vegetables or take care of a variety of jobs around your home. When you buy fruit, when you consume, you should feel satisfied. There are four types of utility. First, form utility. A product must be processed into a form that the consumer wants or needs. For example, wheat is processed into bread, trees are processed into wood, and potatoes are processed into chips. If you order chips with your snacks and the waiter brings you a raw potato, you probably wouldn't be happy. Second, Place utility. Place utility involves transporting products from location where consumers can buy them. If you live in Hyderabad, you certainly would not want to go to Nagpur to buy oranges. With the modern transportation systems, you simply drive to the local grocery store and purchase the oranges that you would want. This is what is known as place utility. Third, possession utility. Possession utility establishes legal ownership of a product. When you purchase something, you normally receive a receipt. This provides legal ownership of that particular product and the right to use the product. Some products, like computer softwares for example, also provide a user license. 
A license of this kind gives you the right to use the product within certain guidelines. Stocks prove that you own part of a company. This is an example of possession utility. Time utility. Time utility could be described as being in the right place at the right time when a customer is ready to purchase a product. Creating and keeping customers means having products available for them when they want them. And often, this requires some type of storage facility. Wheat is one main example of a commodity that must be stored after it is harvested. It is stored in silos until processors are ready to convert it into food products such as bread or cereals. To conclude, the concept of a market is any structure that allows buyers and sellers to exchange any types of goods, services and information. The exchange of goods or services with or without money is a transaction. A market is defined as a sum total of all the buyers and sellers in the area or region under consideration. The value, cost and price of items traded are as per forces of supply and demand in a particular market. The market may be a physical entity or it may be not. It may be global, perfect or imperfect. Markets can differ by products or factors sold, product differentiation, places in which exchanges are carried, buyers targeted, duration, selling processes, government regulations, taxes, subsidies, minimum wages, price ceilings, legality of exchange, liquidity, intensity of speculation, size, concentration, information asymmetry, relative prices, volatility, and geographic extension. The geographic boundaries of a market may vary considerably. For example, the food market, which is in a single building, the real estate market in a local city, the consumer market in an entire country, or the economy of an international trade block where the same rules apply throughout. Markets can also be worldwide for example, the global diamond trade. National economies can be classified, for example, as developed markets or developing markets. Hope you enjoyed this session. We will be next discussing about business cycles in the next session. Thank you.